Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Vime, and today I'm gonna show you how to install the new SPSX 2.0 app for Xbox One and Xbox Series S and X on dev mode. First off, we're gonna head right to the computer. All right, I'll have the link in the description below to Sir Mangler's GitHub for the release of SPSX 2.0. First thing I wanna do is show you what is included for the new update. All right, so the release actually came out a couple of days ago. And as of right now, it has full D3, D12 support, RetroArch achievements, fully working sheets and patches system, pre-configured for online play, and it's based on the latest PCSX2 revision as of today. Special thanks to Reveri and TRW for the extensive testing, as well as TRW for the additional changes and cleanups to the UI. You guys did an amazing job, thank you. All right, so as of right now, if you're downloading this for the Xbox One, what you wanna do is make sure to get the one that says 2.0.0, open up the assets and download the Xbox One APPX file. And then if you're on the Series S and X, there was actually a latest update that came out yesterday. And within this one, it has RetroPass support. It reconnects controllers properly and display on OSD. It fixed the scanning for new game files on boot and minor UI updates as well. And then for this, what you would do is download the Xbox Series AVX2 APX file. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is at the bottom right where it says remote access, click on the remote access settings. Make sure the enable Xbox device portal is checked. And then if it is, at the bottom where it says authentication, you can click on this and set up a username and password so that when you go to the Xbox portal, if anybody by any chance has your information, they would be allowed to drag things onto your Xbox as well. So if you set up a username and password, this will prevent that from happening. And then once you have done that, at the top underneath enable Xbox device portal, you will have two different browser links that you could search. All right, bet. now all we have to do is type in one of the two links into our web browser are on PC and we're gonna do that right now all right so I open up my Google Chrome now for one of the two links it gives you just type it in for me the first link usually never works I have no idea why but they provide two links just in case and then just click enter you may be greeted with a screen like this if you're doing this on Google Chrome all you would have to do is click on advance go down to the bottom go to proceed and if you set it up the authentication, it will ask you for the username and password. So just type this in. All right, bet. And then once we're here, all you have to do is click on add, go to choose file, click on that file that you just downloaded, go to open, click on next, click start because there is no dependencies for the app. And then once it says package successfully registered, now before we head back to the Xbox, we need to create the PlayStation 2 folders inside your USB. I will provide a link in the description below to pre-made folders I already made, just so you could just drag and drop. And now we're gonna head right back to the Xbox. All right, bet, once we're back on the Xbox, what you wanna do is hover down until you see XPSX 2.0. Click the select button on it, go to view details, and make sure to change it from an app to a game and if it's already set as a game then you're good and we're going to open it right up i bet first thing we're going to do is go into the games list press the right bumper two times click on add search directory we're going to click on parent directory multiple times until we get to the root and then your usb should be the e drive now what you want to do is look for your games folder look for your playstation 2 games folder and we're going to click on use this directory. All right, bet. Now what we're going to do is head down to covers directory. Click on parent directory just like we did. Go to your USB device. And we're going to look for your PlayStation 2 covers folder. And then click on use this directory. And then you can press B out of this. And now we're going to head down to the bottom to the actual settings. All right, bet. Now that we're in the settings, what you're going to do is hit the left bumper twice. We're going to get to the folder settings. And then what we're going to do is go down to game settings directory. We're going to go all the way to your USB. And then go to where your PlayStation 2 game settings folder is. Use this directory. I'm going to do the same things for the cheats directory. The widescreen cheats. The no interlace cheats. And then also the texture replacements.
All right, bet. And then once we do that, we're going to hit the right bumper three times. One, two, three. It should be right here. You should be greeted with the bio settings. Click on change search directory. And what we're going to do is go all the way to your USB. And then you're going to configure your PlayStation 2 BIOS folder. Use this directory. I bet once we finish this, hit the right bumper four times. One, two, three, four. You should see the memory card settings. What you can do is go down to the memory card directory. Click A on it. Go to parent directory all the way to your USB. Go to your PlayStation 2 memory card folder. And then click on use this directory. And then once we do that, press B. Alright, for those who already had a save file from the previous SPSX2 versions, you do not need to reformat your memory card, but if you're new and this is your first time doing it, what you want to do is go down to Start BIOS, click A on it. And then once we're greeted with the PlayStation 2 menu, click on Browser. And then once you get here, all you would have to do is click A on it and allow it to format. And then once that's finished, do it with the second one as well. And then you should be good to go and all your saves will save. So anytime you want to switch out of a game, the quick menu for the app is select and start at the same time. And then from here, you can do toggle frame limit. You could save a screenshot. You can switch the software rendering mode. You can also change the disk, do settings for per game settings, and then also close the game. I right, bet now that we're back here, you can basically start playing your games natively if you want to. But for me, I like to upscale and also play in widescreen. So what you can do is head over to the settings, press the right bumper three times, one, two, three. You should see the graphic settings. Now here, if you head down to the aspect ratio, I'm going to change mine to 16 by nine. And then also head down to the bottom. And then you can enable widescreen patches if you have any. And then you can enable the no interlacing patches if you have those as well. And then we're going to keep going down and you should see internal resolution. I'm on the Series X, so I play a lot of my games at five times native. But if you're having any performance issues with a game, please turn down the native resolution. And then if you keep heading down to the bottom, you will also see load textures. And if you have texture packs, you should definitely enable this as well. And then lastly, if you want to enable cheats, Hit the left bumper, go into the emulation settings, and enable cheats here below. And then after that, you can press B. And just like that, you should be good to go, and you should be able to start playing all your favorite games. If this video helped you, please hit that like and follow for more. Let me know in the comments if you need any assistance. Hope you guys have a good one.